Good morning all. So I've put this card on my desk. I did this a couple of days ago and I thought I'm going to power this up. Five volts, that's all it takes. For the first time in 18 years. Yes, this uh, computer card has been sitting in its rack along with a dozen or so other cards for 18 years inside a case in the shed. And it has suffered a bit because it's seen 18 winters a lot of moisture. There's quite a lot of rust on here. Um, particularly you can see it around the switches. Yes, yeah, so you can see quite a lot of actual rust where the plating of these switches has uh, come off and the rust setting in. But there's corrosion on these bolts. There's clearly corrosion on the sides of these switches. And quite a lot of the solder joints look very iffy, particularly under the capacitors. And of course, you know, you've got to worry about whether the capacitors are still good. I don't think they do much on this other than decoupling, so it'd probably still work even if they went open circuit. Probably be more of a problem if they went short circuit. There was also quite a lot of degradation on these edge connectors, particularly these ones down here. I don't quite know why, but these are the power connections. These had a sort of green coating on them, um, so possibly the uh, gold has worn away and this is mostly copper now. The only thing I could use to get that off was actually just a scouring pad. So I scoured it. And in fact, in the end, I had to scrape it with a screwdriver as well, which is probably not ideal. But they look reasonably clean now. I think that would go back into the system and work, as long as, of course, the mating connector is still in good condition. So would you like to see this thing powered up? I've got uh, my power supply here set to 5.1 volts. Slightly overdrive this stuff to uh, keep the voltage up. Um, this coax goes off to a 625 line green screen monitor. Oh, I didn't say, did I? <laughs> this is a video card. Uh, you can probably tell that actually if you're uh, familiar with old school 8-bit computers from the modulator here. This would uh, take the video and put it on an RF carrier. And that's the aerial output, Belling Lee socket. But there's also a composite video. Of course, it's not color this, it's black and white on a BNC there. Yeah, so this is a video card. So let's plug everything in. That's the coax to the monitor. Let's get this five volts plugged in. Uh, positive in there. Negative. And I've got 12 volts on this connector here coming from my 12 volt solar power system. Let's get those nice and tight. Plug this in. Make sure I've got uh, 5.1 volts. And I've also put a current limit at 750 milliamps. Amazingly, this thing takes about 640 milliamps, I think. Okay, let's power on. The switch is dodgy on here. Power on. Right, I need a new angle of view. Right, that's better. We can see the monitor now. So power this on. And yes, on the monitor, we get a whole bunch of characters in a 32 across by 24 down array. Random characters because the RAM chips on here, which are these two, they're 2114 four bit RAM chips. So two of them, we've got eight bits of RAM. It's only 1K. Um, it's not all used because 32 by 24 isn't 1024, I think it's 768. So we're only using 768 bytes of RAM. Now each byte holds a character, but of course a character on the screen is actually eight bits across by 10 bits down. So they're 80 bits. Um, so the, the character in RAM or the value in RAM is just an ASCII value which then points to these ROMs, and these ROMs contain all the character layouts. And that ASCII value will point to an area of ROM. We then need to pull out 80 bits, or eight, uh, 10 bytes, 10 bytes of data from these ROMs, squirted out serially to the um, screen in a composite video uh, stream. And there's a parallel to serial converter here. It's um, LS, 74LS 166. What I love about this sort of circuit is that you can see how everything works. Well, most things, most of these chips are 74LS 
uh, ICs. And of course, you can get the data sheet for each one and see exactly what the inputs and outputs are, the timings, uh, all that sort of stuff. There is a Z80 on here. Now, this was part of a rack and card Z80 computer system. That's not the main Z80 CPU. This is actually a Z80 with a PROM, which generates the synchronization signals. Uh, so this does sync relatively slowly because, of course, each line uh, is only re renewed every 15 kilohertz, 15.625 kilohertz for the uh, line sync. So this is going moderately slowly. I think this 12 meg crystal is subdivided twice down to 3 megs. And I think this uh, Z80 runs at 3 megahertz. And of course, because it's executing instructions to create these sync signals, they're coming out at a lot less than three megahertz. However, I think the video data is being squirted out here at six megapixels per second. So it's quite fast. It's only one subdivision of the 12 megahertz crystal. And so this LS166 uh, parallel to serial converter is actually going some six megahertz continually converting parallel bytes into serial data stream to go to the monitor. And of course, this looks static, but it's being rewritten, well, at least 25 times a second, possibly 50. I can't remember. There is um, an interlacing and non-interlacing switch. This bottom switch chooses between those two, but I can't remember what the field refresh rate is. It's either 25 or 50 hertz. So yeah, that's going quite fast. There are two EEPROMs here, and it um, generally uses the first one, but there's a switch on the panel here, and if I switch it, you can see that some of the characters change. And that's because the second EEPROM is largely a copy of the first one, certainly for the ASCII characters. But I think some of the high value characters, I reprogrammed it to, to have other symbols. So down here, for example, I don't know whether you can see this, but there's a single character that says 12, and there's another one 16, another one 12. There's a 14 over there. And if I switch uh, the switch, they just become inverse ASCII characters. So I put these numbers in. I don't quite know. I can't remember what project that was for, but I put them in for something. Should we have a closer look at the screen? So you can see also there are some Space Invader characters here, which kind of gives away the, uh, the period. This was 1983 when I bought this card. And of course, I bought the computer in bits, bit by bit, because money was limited back then. And I think the uh, PCB was about £15. The components are about another 30 I think. So it's about £45, I think, for the whole card. And um, yes, back then, Space Invaders was uh, definitely flavour of the period. So the graphics character set includes lots of Space Invaders. In fact, if I flick it to the other graphics character set, you can see that they've got these half-pixel um, different versions of squares so that you could build up fairly blocky graphics pretty much of any design because you had all the different versions of uh, four blocks in one character space and these character areas are roughly square on a four by three monitor so that uh, your aspect ratios were all correct but I'll just flick between uh, the one character set where all the values above uh, 80 hex are inverse characters and, oh, that's this one, and they're inverse repeats of the ASCII characters in the bottom half of uh, the ROM. And then, as I say, I change some of them to strange things, not all of which I can identify, but certainly these numbers up to 16 in their own single cell were obviously used for some project or other. And out of the dozen or so of these cards, uh, there's a RAM card which has 64K of RAM on it, dynamic RAM, that would have been this 1K down here in this corner, you can't see at the moment, that's static RAM. Um, the RAM card, the CPU card, uh, the printer interface, the keyboard interface, there's also a floppy disk card that I bought. There was a cassette interface card. So there were lots of cards, but I very intentionally bought um, the VDU card first because I knew that even without any other cards, I could build this and assemble it and it would do something. Not anything very clever. 
because this is just random data in these RAMs. Let's just see these RAMs, these 2114 RAMs here. Random boot up data, but it produces something on the screen of a monitor. So I knew for my £45 expenditure, something would happen and I could see whether my uh, constructional skills were up to the job and whether it actually worked. Interestingly, there's a lot of chips on here that get quite warm. The Z80 is actually very warm to the touch. The ROMs are fairly warm, but then that's not surprising. There's a lot of circuitry in there. The other thing which gets quite warm are these RAMs. They're actually very warm to the touch. So it's not surprising that this thing draws 622, 23 milliamps because there's a lot of heat given out by these components. So you can imagine the, the rack full of cards, a dozen or so of these cards. I had a 10 amp power supply, I think, in that rack, which I've got to fire up. I've got to see whether that still works. And yeah, that was probably um, pulling at least five amps, I'd have thought, to drive all these cards, possibly more. So a lot of these chips are uh, counters, dividers, that sort of thing, because it does a lot of counting uh, in order to take or, or convert the ASCII characters in the RAMs here into character data, which appears on the display. But it has to put it out in a rather strange sequence. So let's take this bottom line and pretend it's the top line. Um, a, an ASCII character in here might um, index an A, for example, in the ROMs. But an A is built up of 8 pixels for the top line, 8 pixels for the second line, all the way down to 8 pixels for the 10th line. So if you're writing it out as a serial data stream through this parallel serial converter to the monitor, you have to run out the top 8 pixels of the first character and then the top 8 pixels of the second character. So you have to have um, a line counter which counts the 32 characters on this line and then restarts. Then of course it has to take out the 8 pixels on the second row of the first character. So we're still looking at the first character, or at least the first 32 characters in this RAM, while we produce this top row of characters. I know this is the bottom row, I'm calling it the top row. And then only then when we go down onto the next row down, do we move on to the next 32 ASCII bytes in the RAM. So lots of positional counters, timers, pointers, and all this sort of, not timers, but counters and pointers to index the ROMs in order to get the correct pixel to fly out of this uh, parallel serial converter at the precise moment in time to place it on the screen. Now there's a bit of flicker here. Actually the screen does flicker, it's not doesn't quite look like that, but it's flickering at about 25 hertz I think. So there's a notable perceivable flicker, but of course this flicker is the relationship between this flicker or at least this screen refresh rate and the capture rate on my camera. So I do want to dig the rest of this computer out of the shed um, at some point because I'd like to fire it all up and get it working. I think there'll be some quite interesting videos I could make about a very old 8-bit computer. Uh, space is the problem of course at the moment. My workshop is tiny as you know. 9-inch monitor and of course the, the rack that this card fits into is a 19-inch rack so that's going to take up uh, a third of the desk um, but yes it would be great fun to uh, get this all plugged in and working again and I'm expecting problems in fact there was a problem with this I had to replace this chip but it struck me that a chip doesn't just fail and one of the gates had actually just failed I've got a funny feeling I took that chip out at some point for some other project and put in the dud to remind me what was in that socket but anyway I tracked it down I had to use the scope for that so I just tracked signals down until the point where they stopped working and it was just this exclusive OR gate here. Um, so yes, I'll, I'll, as I rationalise my workshop and try and tidy things up a bit more, I'll hopefully get the rest of this system out and try and fire it up. And you know, it's got floppy disks and I wrote my own floppy disk formatting software and read and write routines and cassette interface, got all that stuff. Could be quite fun playing with that, but uh, for the moment, cheerio.